your favourite atomic blonde here uh, in, in London. Um, just wanted to do a quick video about Resident Evil and what the hell was that? <laughs> it's just, um, I was, you know, I was, I was giving the show the benefit of the doubt as Andrew Dabb was involved. Um, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a massive Supernatural fan, followed it from day one, all 15 years, you know. Some seasons are better than others, absolutely. Um, but he was heavily involved in Supernatural, so I thought, okay, maybe, maybe. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I've, I've not played Resident Evil for a very, very long time. Um, but, you know, I, I, I still watch streams of people playing Resident Evil, watched as, you know, when he was doing The Village. So, you know, I know what's kind of going on with the streams and, uh, you know, watch some of the animated um, films. So, you know, I know the backstory. I know who the characters are. I know who should and shouldn't be in it. And um, I, I, I'm just at, I'm at a loss, actually, even what to say. I mean, the, the only thing that relates it to Resident Evil is the name Resident Evil, the use of the word Umbrella Corporation, and the name Albert Wesker. Otherwise, it bears no resemblance whatsoever. I think it, it, was, it was a terrible show. There, there's no two ways about it. Um, but I think if they just called it something else and just made it an entity in its own right and come up with a different corporation, it might, might have had slightly more legs to it. Um, uh, cause people, you know, can look at it and go, yeah, it's not a great show, but they were trying, they were trying to do their own thing and maybe giving it a bit more slack. I'm not, <laughs> but like I say, it doesn't detract from being a terrible show. And the two teenage uh, protagonists in it, holy hell. I, d I don't know how Hollywood and the people just keep coming up with the most unlikable characters ever. Absolutely ever. You know, you're supposed to be rooting for these people. And you are. You're rooting for them to die. <laughs> it was just awful from start to finish. You know, you've got these two obnoxious, spoiled girls who seem to have everything but they're sulking because they've had to move to South Africa and they just go around disrespecting their their father Albert constantly telling him to like drop in f-bombs telling him to f off and you're just like wow who speaks to their parents like that I mean geez um and he just this all seems to go over his head he seems to be trying to do the best he can for them now obviously being a you know the, the premise of the show you know that uh Albert's going to be some sort of scientist and he's taking blood off the girls and we don't know why and it, you know he sort of he's like is he experimenting on them is, is he doing this is he doing that um but like mostly shows you there's a point where you actually initially you're a little bit intrigued but then you just don't really care and you just hope they're dying of a horrible disease or something but unfortunately they're not um and it just introduces another heinous female character after the next one, the, 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 the teenage girls are obnoxious, the adult females are obnoxious and narcissistic and just completely unlikable people. And you just think, I, I just don't understand why they think these are good role models for, for girls. That if you just go around being rude and self-absorbed and narcissistic, how that makes you a good person or why that means you should get on in life or why you're deserving of anything because you're just such a foul human being um it, it just escapes me um and the men are all wet lettuces you know they're all like oh sorry you know didn't mean to upset you amazing woman um so there's no good male role models there's no good female role models there's certainly no heroes in this story um it's everybody just looking out for themselves um there's so many stupid things that happen so basically one of these teenage girls, I can't even remember her name now. I watched it, you know, the other week. One's Jade, the other one's something. Um, basically, <laughs> they set her up as this vegan, as you do. Um, so nobody likes her, basically, because she's a vegan. Um, and she gets picked on because she's a vegan. And they mention she's a, a vegan quite a lot. Um, so anyway, 
she sees some some rabbits being taken into the Umbrella Corporation, does some research on the internet. So you know, all these highly top secret stuff she just finds on the internet going, oh, look, they're doing animal testing. And basically persuades her sister for them to break in and let the animals out. So <laughs> obviously their dad works there, so they steal his pass and his phone. But they manage to break into this top facility, top secret facility. There's no guards around. There's no backups. There's no video. I mean, who, who knows? Who knows? They just walk up, press a button, go his voice and lets them in. Absolutely ludicrous. So they go in, um, start looking around, find the animals. Um, then there's a crate, I think, with joy written on it. And there's some like seriously not good noises coming from this crate. So I don't know about you, if there's a sealed crate you can't see in it and some weird noises coming from it, let's open it. So they open the crate and a deranged dog comes out, which again is a kind of a crap nod tip to the original Resident Evil with the, the Dobermans. And the dog's been tested on. Um, and basically there's, there's this medication that they're making called Joy which is the ultimate answer to, you know, antidepressants and all those kind of things. Um, but this dog has had, like, so so much tested on it. It's basically, like, the zombie, well, the rabid, crazy, T-virus up thing. So it bites her. Then uh, they try and get out. I think they finally manage to kill the dog. And then the dad, Talbot, turns up tells him to go home, he'll fix everything. He wipes all the security footage, makes it look like he was working late and the dog attacked him and he killed the dog. So anyway, this is where it goes really stupid. So he knows what he's been working on. He knows this dog's got T-virus up to the eyeballs. He just sends the girls home. Then when he gets home, she says, do I have to quarantine like COVID? I bet my COVID was like a flu. He was like, nah, you'll be fine. She's got the T virus and COVID was more serious, according to Albert Wesker. What? <laughs> it is absolutely insane. So anyway, he just kind of patches her up. She doesn't feel very well. Doesn't quarantine her. Doesn't do anything to think, you know, uh, you know, there's anything serious going on, even though he knows that she's going to turn rabid in 72 hours or whatever it is. So basically this kind of, Plips on and a sister knows, and they've all got timers set, and they're all counting down for her to go ape shit bonkers. So, anyway, so you know, are they all feverishly at home, keeping an eye on her, trying to make sure she's okay, that she doesn't hurt anybody? No, they just go to school, you know, because you do go to school. She has a wig out attack because she starts hallucinating and all this kind of stuff. Then, does she go to her dad and say, Dad, something's really wrong? I'm hallucinating. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, and runs off. Um, then in her last few hours, and the dad's still trying to find a cure, do they all spend it together like a family and make sure she's somewhere safe and secure so when she wangs out, she doesn't kill, you know, all her uh, classmates and anybody within a 100-mile radius? No, they decide to go to a party because that's exactly what you do, wouldn't it? So off the girls go to a party. They're still fighting. The one who's going to turn rabid basically does his skateboard trick and has the ass because her sister doesn't watch her because her sister's, is, I don't know. She, there's this boy that fancies her. She does nothing but sort of belittle him, put him down, tell him to F off all the time, but somehow he's so infatuated with her. Who the hell knows? So when she's got the ass that she didn't watch her because she's being chatted up. This is all the stuff you do, you know, when you've only got like a couple of hours to live kind of thing. Then this guy shows up and he's a journalist who knew something happened in Tijuana where the virus basically got out and it's all been covered up by Umbrella. And it just goes on and on and on like this. It's just stupid. <laughs> There's no other words for it. It's just stupid. The girls act ridiculous. They're running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff. They hate their dad. They hate their dad. They love their dad. They hate their dad. They don't confide in their dad. The dad doesn't confide in them. He doesn't tell anybody at Umbrella because he knows that they'll all be killed. But at the same time, he's doing nothing to, you know, prevent the T-virus getting out. And in between all this, you're flitting from sort of, because that's all set sort of 2020, I think. Um, and then it flips to the future was 2037. And the girl, and 
one of the daughters has grown up and we can see it's all kind of post-apocalyptic there's great big you know mutant things running around and most of the human race is dead or t-virus up um the world building is just shocking you know you're like mm. some reason she's in the uk it makes no sense why she's in the uk but hey um and then they're on this boat there's all these like scientists on a boat um rude self-absorbed narcissist if anything she's got even worse now she's older jade um and just goes around belittling her boyfriend who's been looking after a daughter for six months and then when he basically says oh you know maybe she spends some time with her she's like she goes you're not her dad who are you to say blah 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 even though he's been looking after for the last six months and probably knows her better than you do but hey so she just goes around belittling everybody and being a general knob um and then she basically has got this theory on how she can control or kill the zombies or zeros as they call them so just decides to go out and get one bring it on board because that's a really safe thing to do you know when you've got your daughter there and all these other families and stuff so needless to say the thing escaped and then kills someone who's her lab assistant who um is we've also found out is pregnant and she doesn't really give a fine doodah. And the only good thing, there was a really good bit where she's sort of crying, going, oh, it's all my fault, it's all my fault. And her boyfriend's sort of just looking at her. And she goes, say something. He's like, well, what do you want me to say? And he goes, you think it's my fault? He goes, well, yeah. <laughs> Which I just thought the most actually very most realistic thing you would say. You're like, well, yeah, it's your fault. But anyway, I think he had enough of her, like, belittling him or whatever. So anyway, this show, I just, I actually can't even. So by the end of it, <sighs> Uh, the other sister who didn't go rabid ends up with Umbrella and is now some psychopath running Umbrella. Um, basic side, she doesn't need she needs her sister for something, but then says she doesn't need her sister for something, she just needs a daughter, so shoots her sister. And there's another bit like because I can't stand her so much. Like basically, her sister's on the ground, she's been shot in the stomach, and you're like, shoot her through the head, double tap. Come on, you're you're she's this this crazy psycho armed assassin type woman. And just shoots her in the stomach and walks off. He's like, no, if you wanted an edgy, double tap her. Double tap the bitch, right? But no. Just walks off, go, yeah, 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 she'll die. Which we all know she's not going to die because she managed to get up and walk off and fight, you know, bleeding, oozing out, stomach wounds. And it's and it's just, uh, you know, it's like most things like that, you go, oh, God, I want to see the next season. I hope they make it. I'm just like, oh, I just hope you die and there's not a season two. It is some of the worst TV I have ever ever seen and i've seen some bad tv it's just ugh, the stories just doesn't it makes sense but it's just ludicrous the people just behave appallingly like i said there's no heroes there's no an real antagonist there's no protagonist there's no there's just no point to the show whatsoever and i'm just like I, I don't know what happens to andrew dab but he needs to stop taking the crazy pills and drinking the kool-aid and join the real world and you know write write something decent it is literally one of the worst pieces of tv ever so that's a out of a scale of yeah one to ten me knows it's got to be at least a minus ten you're on the terps if if and uh, Resident Evil, are we are we on the the Malbec or are we on the Terps? We're on the Terps. Just do not touch this show with a barge pole. It's it will rot your brain. It will reduce your IQ, and you will just end up where TV should like help relax you, chill you, entertain you. You'll just be sitting there like, I, I just I need to gouge my eyeballs out and poke knitting needles in my ears because I. I cannot watch any more of this trash. So take this as a health warning. Stay away from Resident Evil. It is the absolute worst. The best thing was I got a, um, a survey through from Netflix <laughs> about some shows. And like, have you heard of these? Have you heard of these? Have you heard of these? And I'm like, yeah, which one of these have you watched? What I think was like three, because all the others are crap anyway. And one of those was Resident Evil. And they asked, like, you know, were you outstandingly happy with it through to, you know, appalling and I was like appalling and would you watch a season two and like sort of you know can't wait to absolutely you know no, no but yeah rather my eyes gouged out I picked that option so hopefully everybody else will as well because geez if we get subjected to a season two or they waste money on a season two 
there is no hope for Netflix. Netflix are done if you're going to keep churning out this kind of nonsense. So anyway, that was my very, uh, as positive as I could make it, review of Resident Evil. So as always, signing off with a big cheers. Stay away from Resident Evil. Speak soon. Bye-bye.